All right, buddy. So what's your name and where are you from? Hey, man. You can call me Dub. I'm up here uh, kicking it up in Maine right now, man. Dub from Maine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you came at me with a pretty interesting story on Instagram saying that you were you worked in corrections first. You were in military, correct? Right. And then you went to uh, corrections and worked in some pretty well-known uh, military prisons. Well, Leavenworth was one of them, and you've yeah. worked in other countries as well. Yeah. Uh, Cuba. The main one everyone knows, you know, the old making big rocks, small rocks deal, going to Leavenworth and getting trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The castle. The good old castle. Is, yeah. uh, we're going to talk about that. But uh, how the hell did you get in there from the military, man? Every CO in there is a soldier. Yeah. It's run by military. And uh, I had gotten injured in, in the cavalry, reclass military police, ended up on the correction side of the house. Um, it's a whole MOS. It's a whole job specialty. So inside of Leavenworth, it's all, all cadre. It's all soldiers that run it. Not cadre like what you would think it like the camps, but cadre as in everybody in its military working hand in hand with like uh, civilian counselors, civilian operations and down. So it's, I just got luck of the draw, man. I reclassed, I got stationed there. Okay. Um, well, was that the first prison that you worked in? Was uh, Leavenworth? The first, yes. First prison, uh, first place I ever worked. I, I worked out in Guantanamo Bay. Guantanamo Bay. What, what were you doing out there, man? Uh, the operations, man. It's uh, corrections operations for people that aren't Americans. I guess we call it detainee operations. You know. So just locking people up over there in Cuba. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, it's 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 Cuba. You know, I can't really speak too much on who's locked up over there, but uh, yeah, I was just doing corrections for the military over there, pretty much. Yeah, I think there was a prison, man. That was pretty much uh, making some uh, camp X -ray world news out there, wasn't there? <laughs> camp X ray with the like, dog kennels and stuff, right, man? It, <laughs> It ain't like that no more. I promise you, man. Uh, 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 over there now, we're better than jails that we got over here. Okay, okay. All right, so you get into Leavenworth, man. Tell me a little bit about the structure of the place, man, with the inmates and everything. How? I mean, is there gangs? Is there anything along those lines in a prison it's like that? There's a difference, first off. I mean, it is. It's the only maximum security prison in the military left. We have confinement facilities around the country, but it's the only max. Yeah. And you know, listen to a lot of the stories from other prisons. The biggest difference I can tell is everybody in there has been through basic training. You understand? There's a yeah. baseline of discipline amongst the inmates. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a different relationship. It's not like it can be the hostility between the COs and the inmates, but there's more at first a basic line of respect because of they were all in the military active duty when they got court-martialed and got sentenced. And a lot of us, myself included, are just in there doing our jobs as soldiers, more so than COs. Does that make sense? Yeah, so they kind of just look at everyone as, you know, they're just doing what they're assigned well, to do type of thing. There's a flip side to every coin, but yeah. there's. I mean, that's the main difference that I hear is that you can have that difference. But the flip side is you got 18, 19-year-old kids fresh out of high school, never been away from home, and now they're walking up here in Leavenworth. Right out, you know what I mean? They have no life experience. What? How did, what? I mean, what what do you think is someone at that young age could have went there immediately yeah, after be, joining the military? I see it. I watch it happen from basic training straight there. I've watched it as, you know, I was an NC. I was a non-commissioned officer, a little higher ranking when I was in there. I had been it's crazy, Army. man, to think that someone, so he probably get, you know, overseas or something and just kind of gets reckless, you know? Oh, man. It gets, it, it's, uh, it gets wild. It gets wild because, you know, you have a super cop, 18-year-olds. You have 18 year olds that are shy and, and you know like you said man in that environment it's primal you know what i'm saying you smell that fear you smell that weakness you know yeah it's 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 a hard line to walk man because the flip side is we're trying to teach these kids look man as a co our job is not to enforce your sentence our job is to make sure people are where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there the doors that are locked supposed to be locked no unauthorized access or leaving you know, it's not our job as like the olden days to enforce a punishment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of these kids think, well, shit, I'm here, you know, way to say it, you know, swinging big through the streets, 18 years old, never been in charge of anything. Now they got 60 dudes. They got to jump when they say jump. Full grown yeah. man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Does, uh, you said that you worked in the shoe. Uh, Actually ran day-to-day -day operations of the shoe for two years in Leavenworth. 
Okay, and what are some of the typical reasons why uh, these military convicts are going to the shoe? Um, okay, let me break down the shoe for you first. Go ahead, yeah, break the, it down. The way we run the shoe in Leavenworth, there's a uh, we have our DSI inmates in their death row. They got their own tier in the back. We've got level one and level two. So there's actually death row inmates in the military. Heck yeah, bro. I didn't know that. Yeah, man. I think uh, last time we were there, we had like seven of them. Really? You the never hear of these things. Oh, these dudes. <laughs> yeah, well, they're there. I promise you that. That's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. I actually, we, yeah, I got a story about that. We get back to it about the DSI tier, but uh, yeah. It's, okay. Henceforth, my friend. Henceforth. Yeah, the shoe comes in two sides. On level one, that's 23 and one. You know what I'm saying? You go by yourself to the bullpen. You're just in there all day. That's you. No TV, no clocks, no nothing. Uh, they picked a damn good name for that. Yeah, yeah. And you can't, and you, yeah, right? And you come <laughs> down there, and here's the deal. If you go 60 days infraction free, you can go up to level two on the other side, which means okay. you can wreck with like three or four other dudes, dominoes, whatever, two or three hours a day. There's a TV on the tier with your earbuds, so if you got TV, clocks, you know, because you know the whole deal, man, not knowing what time it is and stuff. That's a whole psych, that's a whole psych game, but. Yeah. You get on there, usually on level two, about six months before you can start getting your points back to get back up to GP. So you're going to be down there at least six to eight months on an infraction. And that could be, you know, to go to the shoe, man, it also depends on those COs. I mean, you get sent down there for smuggling an apple out the chow hall if the right CO catches you. You know what I'm saying? Damn. That's tight. You know the deal, man. You know what yeah. I mean? I guess, I guess it could be even tighter with the military, you know? Let me tell you what. You know how to verbalize and, and verbate of DR? Shit. You know what I mean? An apple get you in the hole for a year, man. It, That's it, crazy, yeah. man. And it is militant. It's run militantly. You know what I mean? It's uh, We get caught slipping, and I'm not going to say we don't. Guards, it's prison, man. Like I said, young kids, easy to manipulate, easy to... Yeah. You know, it's just like anywhere, man. It's uh, it's. Are they forced to do any kind of uh, physical activities, like push-ups, pull-ups, or anything like that? Inmates? Yeah. Oh no, I mean, dude, they, they got a good in Leavenworth. Let me tell you what, man. It's uh, first we we'll just talk about gangs. You know, they're they're run by race. There's the whites, the blacks, and then the others that are like Hispanic, Pacific Island. Oh, really? Yeah. And then there's a fourth group, man, and that's the Chomos. I'm going to tell you something about Leavenworth that really freaked me out, dude. It's about 60% Chomos. So, like, they have so much in there that they actually have some juice in there. Like, it's That's not, crazy. Oh, that's the most weird, craziest thing ever. It's, uh, me and those were always, like, uh, I was in a lot of positions where I had to deal with inmates. I did, like, the, I ran the inmate advisory council where we talked about, you know, holiday ration, shit like that, whatever. But I wouldn't deal with those dudes, man. I had I did this where I drew my line in the sand, and then yeah. they, they got their own housing units. They it's not PC. They got their own shit, man. It's that's their bow tie. You know what I'm saying? That's their stuff. That's but, unbelievable. And you said they got a little bit of call in the penitentiary, huh? They got a little so power because of the power in numbers. You know how that goes, man. Power in numbers, and it's not like I probably met six real guys, real inmates in there. You know, my whole time there that would go off to, a, you know, a Fed pen. Because the only way you're getting out of Leavenworth is getting FedEx closer to your home, getting Fed, you know, federally transferred to a Fed pen. But everybody wants that because in Leavenworth, you're going to do at least 90%. At but least. but Leavenworth is strictly just for military, correct? Only military. You had to be okay. active duty military when you got court-martialed, which is a trial. Yeah. Which is the same as a trial. It's just <laughs> you, you ain't protected in the military, you know, like you are in the regular courthouse. Yeah, that's unbelievable, man. Uh it's wild that, that that's like the and majority PC's of people. also in the shoe. We got PC over near level two. Oh, so they do have PC in there. Yeah, but they're right there. If you're in PC, you got just a window between you and level two T-Rex. What kind of individuals typically go to PC? Snitches, debts. Um, I've only... Checked- okay, so the whole snitch uh, policy thing pretty much is ran the same way in there. It is, but I don't know that it's uh, enforced as strongly yeah you know what i'm saying i i firsthand have known dudes that have known to talk and still walk around like like nothing around with people so it's not in a lot of ways i've fedexed a couple guys out of the shoe when i was running the shoe i was in process we have in processing also in there right uh-huh. out across from pc where the windows are taped off there's our you know intake your two weeks where you're going through classification 
get you know getting your counselor they give you mad points to see if you're high risk low risk whatever um that's all that's all in the shoe man there's a i wonder why man uh well, where where is Leavenworth located, actually? Kansas, right on the Kansas Missouri line of Kansas City, right there. Okay, I'm trying to figure out why in the hell. Then, you, you know where the USP is in Leavenworth, the United States Penitentiary, where Michael uh-uh. went. I don't know where these places are. Literally, I've heard of them by now. Yeah, a property line with the United States Penitentiary. Okay. Where okay. Went and all that shit, like where Vic went, it's big, big time. I guess like, it's hard. It's a real deal, but it's. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I've heard of some notorious people going there for sure. Yeah, right. And it's like, uh, there's like five prisons in this town. There's like a Lansing jail. There's a really nice fed cush place. So they call it prison city because you got the military compound and they just built another compound next to the prison that if you get five years, you, you can do it there. It's like a confinement facility, a lot, lot yeah. more lax. Five yeah. years in a day, you go next door. Yeah, it's kind of like out here. We got this thing called State Farm. It's just nothing but yes, prisons exactly and buildings. It looks like its own city, man. It's exactly the same, man. It's, yeah. We got one up here in Wyndham. Same but, thing. All right, but look, this is what I'm trying to figure out is how in the hell was this prison influenced by West Coast uh, politics, man? You know, how that? How did that prison, military at that? Demographic is from all around the world. You know what I mean? You got people that were in the military. So they're from Texas. They're from California. They're from New York. They're from Inglewood. They're from, you know what I'm saying? The Bronx. So you get all these cultures from all over the world in one prison. But here's the thing. A lot of them know the lifestyle, but they're not really validated. But they start their little clicks in there. They go, we're going to be some Crenshaw Crips in here because this dude's from Crenshaw. And three of the other dudes that are from Boise, Idaho, trying to front that. You know, And that's how it went. So we would have guys... I'll give you an example. We had a guy in there, this guy's, uh, I won't use his name, but he was claiming gangster disciple with some, uh-huh. and he was actually in prison because in Germany, they were jumping a guy into his little gangster disciple set and they killed him when they were jumping him in. So Damn. that's why he was in. Turns out the dude was never validated. He was in Terre Haute, Indiana, got FedEx less than three hours. He was still on our books and they called us 300 stitches from his neck to his waistline, man. He wasn't in the facility less than three hours. Not even through in processing yet, and they got them. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those are those places related to how Leavenworth. Now, when I was at Leavenworth, there was one real riot. One trustee got killed, and trustee about four days away from going home got killed, man. But uh, it, it was so things happen in there, but it's not an everyday gladiator school. It's not. How the hell did he die? Uh... He was. He volunteered. They needed a ref for the softball tournament. Now, you know there's more to this story than there is, obviously, but when he came in, one of the white heavies in there, I won't use any of these names because some of these guys have, like, TLC specials and shit out. You know what I mean? From, yeah. But the white heavy had three or four little boys that he carried with him. Well, one of his boys had a lifetime bid, and at the game was over, once putting it away. His boy walks over, and I guess the heavy and this guy had beef, the, the trustee, just walked up to him with an aluminum baseball bat at home plate. He quit taking off his rep equipment, cleaned him out. One over the head, then you see on the camera, he just steps over him and gives him the boom. It was three days away, did every day of a 29 year sentence, was three days away from release. Jesus, man. Yeah, it was a he, sad story, man, because the dude that got killed was a straight up, he was an old school, but he was cool as shit. That's crazy. He's good people. That's how well, it damn. is. Someone there you go. Can go home. Yeah, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, military penitentiaries is, can be very dangerous as well. Is there tattooing going on in there? Hell yeah, man. Yeah? Oh, gambling? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> gambling. Man, that place wouldn't survive without gambling. Hell yeah. That's what keeps, oh, them, man. What keeps them jokers straight during the winter, man. It gets cold out there. I know. That's right. Well, we shit. Out, we had to take their cigarettes away, man. That was a bad That was a bad day. Well, damn, man. You have brought a uh, pretty big awareness to... Uh, me and probably a lot of other people on this whole military prison thing. It sounds a lot like the state in in many ways, but also it doesn't. It's crazy with the whole uh, sex offenses thing that you said. That's unbelievable, man. Which side of that coin, though, is like you said. There's not a little lot of booty bandits in there, man. Yeah, there's not a lot of those. One time that I can think of, the whole time I was in Leavenworth, I had to check somebody in because they got took. You know what I'm saying? One time. Ever, because there's too many people giving it away out there. Yeah, 
Done. Yeah. Whatever. So all that, all that, all that stuff's going on in there too Rampant. as well. Rampant. People don't Damn, get. You would think the these like military that. dudes have a little bit better standards, man. Yeah, that's why sixty percent of them are chomos, bro. Just because you wear a uniform, don't make you shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy, man. It's uh, I lo- it opened my eyes big time being in there because that's a big misconception. People think military, oh, they must have been speeding or fighting or shooting. Nah, man, these guys are out there doing that dirt too. You know, just because someone wears a uniform, don't make them a hero. Well, let me ask you a question, man. What was the craziest? I'm gonna ask you two very similar questions, okay? Sure. The first one is, what is the craziest thing you've seen in these prisons or in a lockup or that you can speak of, regardless of what country you were working corrections? What would it be? I mean, I we got, I can give you a couple stories, man. You know, the guys that just been in lockup for too long, you come down and dude's covered in his own feces, you chopped his nipples off and ate one of them. So until he got to speak to the commandant, which is like our warden, got his little jail, a shoe razor at that, chopped his nipple off and ate it. Damn, <laughs> man. And I really can't even get into the stuff I saw like in Gitmo because that's that's a different level of classification, just talking about those people. Yeah. Trouble we neither of us need, but it's, I can't. Where, where was the oh, nipple one done the crazy, at? Craziness stuff, like even... When that dude was rubbing himself down in poop and feces and doing that stuff, it didn't even really phase me at that time. I was like, I was just like, I'm not cleaning that shit up. Yeah. I'm not cleaning that. Yeah. Uh, but it's in the shoe, you see some dark stuff, man. Guys go through some dark times in there, especially that level one, 23 and one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they, what they, the hell? Where were you at when you seen the whole nipple scene? I actually saw the aftermath of that when he was already in there and it was already down the hatch, man. Dang. And what prison was this, though? Oh, can you even say that? Oh, Leavenworth. Okay. in the shoe, man. All right, man. So, all right. One more question. One more question before we go. You said you were military, man. Did you see any? I always ask people that's done military, man. Bring it. If if they've seen any wild shit. You know, some people have very laid back, you know, uh, going. they don't really see no action or anything. Were were you the type of individual that's seen some action? Yeah. What kind of action are you talking about? Just in, I'm talking about live fire uh, action. Yeah, Any well, kind of, yeah, yeah. Been, Listen, man. Uh, people probably see, man. In 2003, I was in Baghdad, brother. I was getting. Look, it. I'm a Call of Duty fan. All right, yeah, man. You are, man. Look, my book <laughs> on Blackout. I was showing him your videos earlier. Like he plays Blackout. I was like, I know, man. That's oh shit! All right, so you were what? You were doing what? I was. I was telling my boys. I was like, look, I'm about to talk to this guy, man. Hey, no, I'm talking about you. Say you were in Kuwait. Oh no, I was in Iraq in 03, Baghdad, man. Third Infantry Division. Boom, boom. <laughs> There, that's, awesome. that's what's up, man. Salute to you and everyone that was out there rocking it out, you know? Yeah, I got to see all the sides. <laughs> you know, I, I've, uh, I've been there. I've been in the real stuff. That's but, crazy, man. Did it, did, was it uh, a pretty damn... Really look, I've been, in, I've been in a couple gunfights, man, where, yeah. where the, you know, and the adrenaline gets flowing, man. Was it, uh, was it going, was, was it pumping for you when you were out there? The first few times, man, I remember, that's when I, that's when I started smoking cigarettes, bro. <laughs> Really? Yeah, we get done with a little skirmish or something. We're all sitting there like this, shaking. Yeah. When my driver was, uh, he was a dude from New Jersey, smoking Newports, man. He gave me one of those. I started chugging on it, and instantly, that's how I started smoking to calm that adrenaline. After about six or seven months, man, it seemed like you get into those situations, and it, it uh, it's like your body protects itself. Everything starts slowing down. You yeah. Know, you just start seeing things moves before they happen. I'm sure it's like that when you're in the pen and you get that hypervigilance. Exactly. Know? It's almost exactly how you explained it. It's a different type of living, man. You see it coming. You start yeah. to see things, pick up on little things. That feeling you get, it's, yeah. the same thing. it's the same thing, man. Gladiator school is gladiator school. When you're fighting for your life. And I always used to say people are the, the ones that get caught up like slipping and stuff is the ones that forget where the hell they're at. Complacency you know? kills, man. Yeah. You got, And it only takes, I mean... Again, it's why I, I kind of wanted to talk to you. It's talking to somebody who knows. It, it's a uh, complacency. It takes one second, man. All right, man. So you obviously been in battle, and you kind of merged into the whole, uh, you know, prison scene later on in life. And you got a lot of knowledge based upon it, seen some crazy stuff. What do you think would be the best advice for someone that's getting locked up and they're in the military, they're probably going to be seeing a prison like Leavenworth? What would be... Uh, some key things that you should tell someone. 
uh, the main thing I always told the new group of people that were getting ready to go through in processing, it is the worst piece of advice, and I hear it all the time, is go start something with the biggest dude on the yard. Yeah, that is the worst piece of advice. Worst piece of advice I've ever heard. So that's the first thing I tell them. You do that, you're going to be over there in the infirmary quick because it's not like the movies. There's going to be eight dudes and they're going to rip you apart. You see someone actually try to do that? Yeah, that's why I started telling every class that came through not to do it. That's crazy, you know, man. I hear it all the time in the comments section. That is really not what you're supposed it. to do. And I wasn't there when this guy really did it. I was, I yeah. was off. I wasn't at work. But he did it. And that's not how you know. What, yeah. You ain't even going to get to the baddest dude on the yard usually. You know what I mean? You're going to have about <laughs> six or seven freaking flunkies in between you and him. But he got – and that. so that's my biggest thing. And it's like what you just said also. It's not always about respect. You need to keep yeah. your head on a swivel and be ready to go. Yeah. If you're not, yeah. you're regardless go. if you're respectful or not, yeah. someone still gets you. Be respectful, but hopefully you can see it coming. That's all you can hope for in there is to see it coming. Yeah. That's yeah. all you because it's going to come. So keep be that, looking for it. Keep your head on a swivel, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's that's some of the best advice you could possibly get going going into the penitentiary. But look, man, I appreciate you coming on to the show. Likewise, my friend. Uh, do you have any kind of shout outs you'd like to say before we leave? No, man. Mm -mm. All right, buddy. Well, uh, look. Hey, I just want—I give a shout out to you, man, and the people you're helping. I hey, that, you know, keep up. Yeah, keep shout up out to you, man, for serving our country, my friend. I appreciate that, man. Hey, we're watching. Keep up the good work.